Thank you so much for the intro. So as he said, I'm Stacy Ferreira, and I want to share with all of you my entrepreneurial story so far. So my story started when I was in high school, and my parents sent me to an all-girls Catholic private high school in Phoenix, Arizona, um, where I knew absolutely no one. And so all of my friends, meanwhile, were at the public school about 40 minutes away, and I was like, what am I going to do with all my time without any of my friends? And so I turned to my brother and said, you know, what's a good way to occupy my time? And my brother had just started learning to program himself. And he was like, you know, we've been interested in games for a while. Why don't you learn to program a game? And so my brother and I sat down and we started teaching each other, you know, how to program. And finally, as we were um, kind of talking about all these different ideas we had about, you know, things that we would build in this game, um, and things of that sort, the time came and I graduated high school. And my parents kind of gave us an ultimatum. We were like, they were like, you guys have you know, one more summer to do whatever you want to do. And then you guys are going and getting internships like normal people <laughs> and starting down your career path. And so my brother and I were like, all right, we have one summer. Let's make the most of this time. What should we do? And we decided to make our motto, do is more than think. So we decided that we would work on one of the projects that we had thought about in high school, um, which was an idea and a concept for storing usernames and passwords online and allowing people to auto log in to anything that they had usernames and passwords for online. And so my brother and I took all of our savings and we're like, you know, to make the most of this time, we don't need mom and dad over our shoulders, so we're going to move to Los Angeles and team up with another guy um, who has a background in security and big data and start building this company. And so my brother and I, with all of our savings, moved to this apartment in South Central Los Angeles, um, which was not the best of places, but um, it was what we had money for to pay the rent. And we rented out run one of the rooms to a friend of ours so that we could afford to live here. And we started working on our product. And it started off like this. It started off with just pen and paper, writing down our idea, prototyping everything, saying, you know, these are the things that we need functionality-wise. This is what we want it to look like. This is how we're going to start. And so this is what we started with. And then, as we were sitting there in Los Angeles, I decided to get on Twitter one day. And I was just searching through my feed, and I saw a tweet from Sir Richard Branson, who some of you may know um, is the guy who started Virgin Records, Virgin Mobile, Virgin Airline, everything Virgin. And his tweet said, Come meet me in Miami for intimate cocktails. Donate $2,000 to charity. And then you may not be able to see up there, but the next tweet was an email address. And going with our motto of do more than think, um, I took that email address and I was like, hey, so I'm not legally old enough to drink cocktails in the United States, <laughs> but um, I would love to come to Miami and meet you. What a great opportunity. And so I sent that email and learned this lesson that you should find good opportunities and risks, and take those risks. And I thought that this was a good opportunity. Meeting Richard Branson, who was someone I had always looked up to, um, I was like, you know, this is awesome. And I got an email back, and his secretary was like, all right, cool. You need to be in Miami in 48 hours, and if you and your brother want to come, you need to donate $4,000 in that 48-hour period and get here. And so my brother and I are living back in this apartment in South Central Los Angeles with $4,000 as pretty much our entire budget, everything we had saved up our entire lives. And so we were like, cool, we don't have this money. Like, we just don't have it. And so we did the only thing that we needed to do at the time, which was to call up mom and dad and be like, hey, guys, so we saw this tweet. And you don't know what Twitter is, <laughs> but you should loan us $4,000 to go meet Richard Branson in Miami. And my dad is a businessman, and so he was like, I think, first of all, you kids are crazy. Second of all, if you want any money from me, you're going to write me a proposal. And you're going to tell me, you know, where is this money going? And how do you plan to get it back to me? And my brother and I were like, OK, we can do this. And so we sat down and we wrote a proposal to my dad um, about, you know, the money is going to Richard Branson's charity so that we can go meet him. And how we'll get the money back, um, we'll sell laptops, we'll sell dolls, whatever we have to get this money back to you. And my dad comes back to us and says, you know, this is going to be a lesson in money management for you guys. I'm going to loan you guys the $4,000, and you have to repay it in three months. And so my brother and I are sitting there together in this apartment, 
thinking, you know, we've already done something that's kind of impossible, which was at the time for me, I was 18, my brother was 20, moved to an, an entirely new city to start a company. And so we were like, okay, cool, we'll take the money and go. And so we did. <laughs> um, we took the money and we went to Miami. And we had two nights there. The first night was intimate cocktails with Richard Branson, which I did not drink because I was not old enough. Um, and we went around the room and talked about you know, who we were, what projects we were working on, things that made us um, kind of excited and things we were passionate about. Um, and the second night, again, we stayed close to Richard Branson and said, hey, you know, we'd love to get your contact details. You know, we're here for two days. Why not make the most of the opportunity? Um, and so we were like, could we have your email? And so we got it. And we went back to Los Angeles. And we worked on building our prototype. Um, at the time, we were like, you know, this is an amazing opportunity. We need to seize the moment, work really hard, and send him something and see what he thinks, get his feedback while, he, while we're fresh in his brain. And so we built this, um, which was our first iteration of our site, which I'm frankly kind of embarrassed about now. Um, but um, we sent him this working prototype that was up on our site, mysocialcloud.com, and said, hey, here is our site. What do you think? And um, he was like, you know, this is, this is awesome. You are, you're two kids. You came all the way to Miami. You remind me of myself when I was young, um, ready to go, and were able to execute on building a prototype, um, which was cool. And so I learned that product, having a physical working product in entrepreneurship gets you miles ahead, and presentation. You know, presenting something at the right time to the right people and having the right idea, and the way you go about presenting that, which for us was, you know, recently after we had met him, we had talked about the idea, we had followed up. So those are two things I learned. And then Branson did something that was great for us. He gave us an opportunity, and he introduced us to a friend of his, Jerry Murdoch, who is um, the founder of Insight Venture Partners, which is a venture capital firm in Silicon Valley. And Jerry flew out to meet us in LA, and he drilled us on our business, and he was like, you know, what are you guys doing? What do you guys think about college? Um, how are you guys gonna make money? And we answered all of these questions, and we went out to dinner that night, and Jerry said, all right, here's the deal. Branson and I are gonna invest in you guys. We're gonna invest a million dollars um, with the help of Alex Welch, who is the founder of Photo Bucket. And that kickstarted our dream. And so we moved from that little apartment to this little loft in Los Angeles. And as you can see, we have the, the sleeping bags there. Um, and this is where everything really, our, our dream turned from, um, you know, a working thing online to something that people could actually use. But my parents um, were like, you know, one of, one of you kids, my brother and I started the company, we're the only two kids, they're like, one of you has to go to college. Um, and so me being the youngest who didn't have the college experience, um, I had to go to college for a year. And so I went to New York University and I worked out of my dorm room for that one year. And during that year, we had a couple things happen. The first was um, we updated our site, which was the first time we had to pull our site down and we were getting all these emails from people being like, why is your site down? And to us, this was news. We were like, we haven't really had press about our product, why are people using this? Um, but it had traveled through word of mouth. So I learned that people actually use useful and reliable products, believe it or not. And so people were confused why our site was down for maintenance, why we were updating. Um, and so the first lesson in building a web product was you need to make sure that your site's always up and that you have backup things running, which was a big lesson for us. Um, and then with the help of the investment, we expanded our team and we were able to hire great people that would move our product further. People that we knew were passionate about it and people that had the skills and the talents to take what we saw as founders and make it into something that was a viable business. From there, we started doing everything that we could do. We had never really done a business before. We had never marketed anything. And so our first marketing campaigns looked something like this. Um, they were passing out flyers, going to college campuses, just spreading the word any way that we knew how. Um, 
which was great at the time because we didn't really know what we were doing. And we learned another big lesson in while we were talking to college campuses and all these different people, they were like, you know, you guys should add this to your product and this to your product and, oh, this would make it look really cool and this would be a great feature that I want. And so we did something which was add bookmarks to our site, um, which turned out to be something that was a big lesson in um, you shouldn't take everything that people say and implement it into your product because then you come up with this product that's like jumbled and has a million different things in it. Um, and so that was a huge lesson to us as first-time entrepreneurs that we needed to stick to our vision. And so the way that we came around to this was we looked at our data and we said, okay, so all of the voices that are telling us to implement these things into our product um, are like the 1% of the people using our product. Um, and we looked and actually 1% of our um, users were using the bookmarks. And so we got back and we got focused and I decided that I needed to focus. I needed to leave school to work on this full time. So I filled out my leave of absence paperwork for NYU um, and decided that I needed to spend my full attention, my full time and focus on this like I needed focus in the product. So I did that and I moved back to LA to work with the team which had now expanded to 10 people and worked full time on this product instead of going to school. And we did a lot of awesome things through that. We were able to build the extension for our product. We were able to get our auto login feature going. And we just overall had a lot more focus in what we were doing. Um, I became a little bit of a data hound. And I made crazy Excel spreadsheets about all the things we needed to do marketing-wise and product-wise. Um, and I learned that data is super valuable for any company that you have. And collecting data um, is one of the best things you can do in order to figure out what steps you need to make to move forward um, and things of that sort. So now we have become this product that does everything that our initial vision had. Um, we store usernames and passwords and we auto log people in. And we had just started marketing the product and getting it out there in a reasonable way um, and expanding into the enterprise um, area where we were providing solutions for username and password storage, um, which was great for us. This is a picture of our team. We expanded our team. And this guy comes into our office as we're raising our Series A. Um, this guy's name is Michael Furtick, and he has a company called Reputation.com. Um, and our understanding at the time when he walked into our office was that he was an angel investor looking to invest in our Series A. Um, and he came into our office and he was like, um, you know, I really have done a lot of research on you guys and on your product, and I like it. I like it a lot, and I want it to become a part of my core suite of products at reputation.com. And sitting there, I was 20 years old as I am now, this was just a couple months ago, um, and my brother being 22, talking about our first acquisition, um, which was something that was pretty new to us. Um, but he comes in and um, made a convincing argument for getting our product out there to more people, have more resources, all of these sorts of things. And so my brother and I, um, take this offer seriously and we go and do some research about what else there is out there and um, we kind of look at some other offers and we come back to him and say, you're right, um, it makes sense that our product should be integrated into what you're doing, um, which is they're building something called the Data Vault. And so we got acquired by Reputation.com six months ago, um, which for us was an awesome thing because our product is now in a home that has a lot more resources, has a lot of knowledgeable people that are working to make it a core technology and something even bigger that they're building, um, which was great. And so throughout this whole thing, I've learned a lot of lessons. And one of the biggest lessons I've learned is that all of these things are contributing to not only my history, but the history of other things that are happening in the world. And so I want to leave you guys with a quote that is kind of like Nick, one of my favorite quotes. Um, and it says this, the world is not as it is, the world is as we make it. And so I encourage all of you guys to go and make your own world and make it something special that you believe in. Thanks.